that and i want to take this opportunity to welcome each one of you who are not here at the beginning of the sabbath school those who have joined us late i want to welcome you once again for the sabbath school program and in order to continue with our sabbath school program um, i will ask our technical team to play a video regarding our mission appeal Ellen White wrote, those who love God should feel deeply interested in the children and youth. To them, God can reveal his truth and salvation. Realizing the importance of reaching the young in their community, church members in cities around the world are connecting with this special group in different ways. Let's look at some of the largest urban areas of the United States, where Adventists are ministering to youth and children. Los Angeles, California is the second largest city in the country. In the greater Los Angeles area, members of a Vietnamese Seventh-day Adventist church saw the need to teach younger generations how to speak Vietnamese so that they could communicate with their older non-English speaking family members. The church opened the first Vietnamese language school in the city. The children not only learn the language, but also become more familiar with their culture. What began as weekly classes became a summer camp and then an after-school program. Opening the language school enabled the church members to fill a need in the community and to serve the people in the city. Chicago, Illinois is the third largest city in the U.S. In Chicago, staff at an urban center of influence called Art Space use pottery, crafts, painting, and music to connect with children. Located next to a play area and a busy mall, the center initiates relationship building through creative activities. Art space is open throughout the week and it partners with different groups such as schools to make its activities available to children. The center's goal is to make the community aware that the center is present to provide a blessing to people in the surrounding areas. Are you inspired to do your part in reaching a particular group in your city? There are the university students, the deaf, the young parents, the caregivers, all who can benefit from your interaction with them. Visit missiontothecities.org for resources and more ideas on how you can use your skills and talents to reach the people in your city. Uh, in closing, I would like to invite our praise team to come and sing the closing hymn. And while we stand and sing the closing hymn, uh, the children will collect the mission offering. Praise team. Eight six, and I would like to invite the congregation to stand on our feet as we sing the song.
Smiley to come forward to close up, uh, close us with a word of prayer. Our heads as we pray. Our God, our Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege that you can come before your throne of grace. We thank you for being our God. We thank you, Lord, that we know that we've got a God whom we can trust and worship on a Sabbath day. As we are in your house now, Lord, we know that you are here to meet up with you. That's the day that we come to talk to you. Father, we invite the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts so that we can reverence your glory and reverence your name and reverence your sanctuary. Father, lead us, take the impurities out of our lives. Let our characters reflect you. Let us be like you in everything that we do. Father, let us shine out to the world so that the world can drawn, be drawn closer to you and your soon coming of the new. We thank you for the services that have taken place so that, Father, we should be different from the world. For the world to see the differences from us, Lord, it will be, that is our character. The character is the most important thing that resembles who we are. Father, thank you so much for giving us such opportunity. Let us live a life of repentance and daily surrender to your life, to yourself. Dwell among us. Dwell each and every one, one and everyone who is in your house today. All the services that are going to take place, Father, let them be inspired by you. Let us not go out here knowing that we have met with the Lord and we have been changed. Let us not make it a normal thing that we just come to Sabbath to just congregate and meet up with friends and meet up, meet up with our Christian brothers. But let us come here, Lord, realizing that when we come here, we are meeting up with the mighty Lord who has saved us and we have protected us throughout the week. Father, there are so many things that are going through in the world and that are going through in our lives. Father, as we come in your feet, we humble and realize that, Father, be with us, guide us, protect us. We pray for the little ones. Father, give us the reverence in your sanctuary. That's the most important thing that we should fear. That's where fear starts from, which is the fear of you when we know that we are in your sight, that this is not a playroom, this is a house of worship to come. And when you talk to us, we should listen. And our hearts should be receptive until you wait and we'll be changed. And the world will be drawn closer to the light that you have put in us. We thank you so much. We thank you for all the services that are going to partake throughout the day. Bless them and be with us. According to your will, we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated now, and I would like to thank each one of you who have joined us for the Sabbath School. Uh, let us uh, transition to the uh, divine service, and uh, as we continue, uh, we would like to ask our praise team to continue singing as we uh, transition to the divine service now. Thank you. So we'll sing number hymn 334, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. Three, three, four.
And 590, press and obey, 590. We'll sing number one. Praise to the Lord. Number one.
Good morning and happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you. I would like to welcome everyone that is here and also those that will be joining us online later on from the recorded uh, video in the YouTube. Well, in the house, I see so many faces, but none of them is new to me. Well, those who are coming back from far, you're all welcome. But just to mention just the two, I can't hold it back. Mr. and Mrs. Twan Twan, they are over there. I mentioned them because some of you only know their children, they don't know them. Sipo and Spe, here are their parents today. They are visiting us from South Africa and we are so glad to have them. And everyone else who is here, you're welcome. We have a few announcements to make. The first one is at 2 p.m. today. There is focus on the family, and the reading will be the Adventist home. Those who are part in the Cork Fellowship WhatsApp group and uh, also in, in the Cork Church group, they will have the digital book there for them. So it will be starting, in fact, continuing from the last time at 2 p.m. this afternoon. And tomorrow, it's basking in the woods. It's taking place in Kasumata. Also, it's not the first time. It's a follow-up to what was happening last year. So the, the meeting it will be at 1 o'clock, and it will be uh, in the school. Well, when you come into Kasumata, there is crossroads, and when you cross that road, on your right-hand side, the first building is the school. So at 1 o'clock, that's where we're going to meet and proceed to the spot where we will be doing our ministry there as a church. Everyone is invited, those who have been there before and those who will be going for the first time. And, uh, okay. Tomorrow at 7 a.m., the Adventist men will have their devotion. So those also can find the login in the Adventist men's WhatsApp group. But even if you are not there and you'd like to be there, you can contact Joe or any other man in the house who may be in the WhatsApp group. They will give you the, the login details. The last one, the Pathfinder. We've been asking for registrations, people to register because we are beginning the, the year next Sabbath afternoon. So we just want to remind those that have registered to make sure they attend and come to church ready for that. Those who have not registered, I just want to remind you, you have today as the last chance to register. I uh, will be here and Des will be helping, with, helping me for the Pathfinders and Adventurers. Those who have been part of the club before, we just want to ask them to please register because I don't think it will be 
okay for us to assume they are part of the club if they haven't registered. We intend to actually start at the beginning of the month. We will not assume anyone who has not registered as part of the club until they do register. And we just want to make an appeal. We don't want to cause problem for the teachers having to go back and teach the things that they have taught already just because people registered late. We've been asking for people to make decisions for about two months now. So it will be fair to assume those that do not come forward that they have decided, which we will respect, that they won't, don't want to be part of the club again. Thank you. most gracious and loving have father in heaven thank you that we have a god in heaven who promises rest for us and not just on the seventh day on the sabbath but every day that when we are burdened and heavy laden we can come to jesus and experience rest but lord thank you so much that this sabbath is this constant reminder that we have of this promised rest and we thank you for uh, the blessedness that we have already experienced and we will continue experience to experience as we worship you and we fellowship with you and with one another. Uh, Father in heaven, we also bring to you our brothers and sisters who could not be here today. Wherever they are, whether they are traveling or are going through some uh, circumstances right now, please, Father in heaven, be present in their lives and assure them of your providence. Embrace them with the grace of heaven and bless all of us as a church family, as a church community, we pray in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Call to worship. The call to worship this morning comes from the book of uh, Deuteronomy, chapter 5, verse 6. And we'll continue through to verse 12. It so reads, God speaking, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of the bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourselves a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the waters under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me, and keep my commandments. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. Observe the Sabbath day to keep it holy as the Lord your God commanded you. May the Lord bless the reading of these verses. Amen.
I'm going to ask the praise team to lead the opening hymn. Let's stand for the opening hymn, which is number 469, Leaning on the Everlasting Arm. For our stewardship emphasis uh, today, let me just uh, quickly uh, read to you a verse in a psalm. A psalm chapter 24, a verse 1. Psalm chapter 24, verse 1 in the New King James Version, it says, The earth is the Lord's and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. Uh, let us today recognize God's ownership of everything that we have uh, by returning our uh, tithes and offerings. Our deacon, deaconess are now ready to receive our tithes and offerings. Thank you.
Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the so much wonderful things that you've done for us, the gift of life, health, and church family. We would like to thank you in particular for these offerings that have been offered today, the tithes as well. And for those who are not able to offer today, we ask you to bless them as well so that they can do it. Good morning, good morning everyone and happy Sabbath. That's not good enough for Pastor Ben, you know that, right? Happy Sabbath, everyone. Oh, that's much better, that's much better. And of course, the question, what's the question? What's the question that is coming? Huh? How are you today? Good. But I want something much better than good. Uh, good, good, good. Amazing, amazing. Oh, we'll take that. All right. So I hope that today we are here not only to fellowship with each other, not only to see your friends in church, but we are here to what? You're amazing as well. Yeah. Because we are here to fellowship and worship God. Now, the story that I would like to share with you today is something that happened with Pastor Ben and with his family and with Luke, by the way. Uh, I shared this story a few Sabbaths ago, but almost all of you were not here. I think it was only Alicia who was here. Yeah, so Alicia, you would not mind if I'm going to share the story with them again, yeah? Yeah? Because I remember you were here at that Sabbath when, yeah, all of you except Alicia were not here because that was a Sabbath when we had the uh, camp meeting in New Market. Now, I would like to share this story because it's connected to Pastor Ben's sermon as well today, which is for you as well. It's not just for a mommy and daddy today, but it is for you as well. Now, the story is that a few weeks ago, Pastor Ben, with his family, we went to Northern Ireland. Anybody of you, you've been to Northern Ireland? Have you been to Northern Ireland? You've been to Northern Ireland, Eloise, yeah? Anybody else? Northern Ireland? Have you been to Northern Ireland? Felix, you've been to Northern Ireland, all right? So we went to this uh, farthest corner of Northern Ireland in a small town called Lima Vadi, which is, if you drive from here, it would take you, you want to make a guess? How many hours do you think? How many hours? One hour or more than one hour? Give you a hint. It's more than one hour. Two hours. Another hint. It's more than two hours. Three hours. Another hint. It's more than three hours. Five hours. Yes, at least five hours. Can you imagine that? Driving for five hours. So we have to drive. Yeah, that's a long, long time to drive, right? Yeah, yeah. But Pastor Ben, Pastor Ben must be there oh, because I had to be there because I, did, I need to do a wedding. All right? So the wedding cannot go ahead without Pastor Ben. So Pastor Ben needed to be there. 
So we had to drive for more than five hours from Malo all the way to Mitchellstown, uh, passing through Kildare, Port Leis, and then Dublin, going up into uh, Drogheda, Dundalk, uh, what else, uh, Banbridge, Belfast, and then all the way into Limabadi. Five hours, at least five hours. It was a long drive. Now, I made a deal with, Ron, uh, with Luke. And Luke is my, my son, a little boy, and I made a deal with him because it's a long drive. And so we said to him, on our way back home, okay, on our way back, we're going to pass by a tourist spot. So we're not going to drive back home to Dublin. We're going to drive back home to Sligo. Now, if you haven't looked at the map of Ireland, it's on the east of Ireland, the island of Ireland. And you know what? If we're going to drive there, it's actually going to take us longer. Not five hours, but six hours. But he was happy and he was okay. Luke was okay. Why? Because we said to him, we're going to see on our way back, we're going to see this massive rock mountain in County Sligo called Ben Bulbin. Have you heard about that mountain? Six hours. Yeah, maybe seven hours. Yeah, if you stop by somewhere. But we said to him, we're going to see Ben Bulbin. And Luke had this book. And he's been checking all the nice places in Ireland that he's been. And one of those things that he would want to see is this massive mountain that is rising up into the sky for maybe half a kilometer. Can you imagine that? This is a massive rock mountain, 500 meters up into the sky. All right? And we said to him, we're going to see that mountain. But you know, that day, Koi, when we started driving from Limabadi, from the northern part of Ireland, going down into Sligo, that day, it was raining. And when there is rain, what is there as well? There's what? Yeah? When there's rain, there's clouds. And that day, it was also foggy. Now, when it's foggy, what can you see? Not that much, right? Not that much. Yes. It's just kind of all this white fog in front of you, right? Yeah. When it's not foggy, yes. Absolutely. It's just white. It's just white. Hmm. But as we were driving, there was a lot of fog. And we said to him, well, County Sligo is still an hour away. Maybe when we get there, the sky would clear and we would see Ben Bolven, this mountain. All right? But then as we get closer and closer to Sligo, the fog was still there. We stopped in a tiny town. I can't remember the name of the town now. But we had a chat with a lady there. There was a lady. And this town was probably still 10, 15 kilometers away from Ben Bulbin. But you know what the lady said? She said, on a very good day, you can see Ben Bulbin from here. So from that town, if there was no fog, we could already see Bin Bulbin. Because again, it's a what? It's a mountain. It's a rock formation that rises up into the sky 500 meters. We could have seen Bin Bulbin already from that town. But we couldn't. Because there was what? There was fog. You know, we look at the map, Google map. Have you seen Google map before? Yeah? Yeah? We look at the map. Where is the closest point that we can drive into? So we are closest to Ben Bulwin. And then we started driving to that closest point. All right? The closest we could get. But as we got closer and closer, the fog was still there. We got closer and closer to that point, the fog was still there. Let me actually show you a picture so you can imagine. All right? So I want you to imagine there was this massive rock formation, 500 meters rising up into the sky. We're driving 
closer and closer to it. And you know, all we could see is this. Look at that. Can you see that? Can everybody see that? Do you see Ben Bolvin? Do you see a mountain there? Do you see a mountain? There was absolutely no mountain because it was completely covered by clouds and fog. No mountain to see, no Ben Bulbin to see. You know what uh, Ben Bulbin would look like, all right, if it was not foggy and there was no cloud and it was just raining? It would be like this. You see that? Ah, can you imagine that? A massive mountain like that. We are at the closest point, all right, that you can drive into to see Ben Bulbin, to see this rock mountain formation. But because of the fog, we could not uh, see it. All right. You see a house. Yes, you could see a house like 10 meters in front of you. But there was no Ben Bulbin at all. Now, maybe you're kind of expecting, Pastor Ben, is there a good ending to the story? Is there a happy ending to the story? What do you think? Martin, what do you think? Is there a happy ending to the story? You know, I turned around to look, and I said, Look, I am so sorry to disappoint you, but I don't think that today we're going to see Ben Bulbin at all. And so we started driving. We started driving farther now and farther and farther away from Ben Bulbin. And let me tell you, there is no happy ending to the story. We did not see Ben Bulbin at all that day. And so we said to look with another promise. We're going to come back here again but we're going to make sure we check the weather forecast <laughs> so we would be certain we are going to see Ben Bulbin when we visit Sligo again. Now, I want you to listen to Pastor Ben because I'm going to share something very important to you. Do you know that God is present in your life? Do you know that? Do you believe that God is with you? Hmm? Now, let me tell you this, very important. There are times in your life, and maybe in mommy and daddy's life, and in the life of everyone that you see in here in church today, sometimes you don't feel as if God is there. But here's my question to you. When Ben Bulben was covered by cloud and fog, was Ben Bulben still there? Yes, Ben Bulbin was still there. All right? How about everybody? Was Ben Bulbin still there? Was the mountain still there? Or did it cease to exist? It was still there. And if you go there today on a lovely day, you're still going to see what? You're still going to see Ben Bulbin. And so today, children, I would like to share with you this very important message. Martin, God is always with you. Even in those times when you don't feel like God is there, God is still there for you and He is present in your life. Just like that Ben Bulbin, even though it was covered by clouds or fogs, but Ben Bulbin was still there. In the same way, in those times when there is a cloud in your life, God is still there. Okay? Always remember that. And Pastor Ben would like to share with you a verse now. And I hope that uh, you can memorize this verse. Where is that verse? Let me see. Oh, there it is. Joshua 1 verse 9. Joshua 1 verse 9. This is what God said. He said, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. And here's the promise. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go or wherever you are. The Lord your God is always with you. 
I want everybody to bow their heads now as we seek the Lord in prayer. Yeah? Let us pray. Now bow your heads, everybody, and close your eyes, and let us pray. Oh, dear God, a Father in heaven, we thank you for all these children that we have in this church family. And Lord, we pray that even in their young, innocent minds, uh, 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 stuff in the Bible, uh, uh, stuff about you that they don't fully understand, but let them know, even in their young minds, that there is a God in heaven who is there for them, and who will be with them wherever they are, wherever they go, that you are there present in their lives to provide for them what they need to keep them safe and to love them, love them as always. I thank you for blessing each of the parents that are in here and those who are not here. The Lord, as we guide and teach and nurture our children, may we also experience the same assurance of your presence in our lives. And bless each one of us here today. We pray in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. You may now return to your seats. Happy Sabbath. Sabbath. We thank God for another opportunity to bring our request to Him, and I would like us to be encouraged by the words of uh, Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6, which says, Trust in the Lord with all our heart, lean not on your own understanding, in everything acknowledge Him, and He shall direct our paths. So as we go before Him with prayer, and prayer request and thanksgiving, may we learn to lean on him. So any prayer request and thanksgiving? for prayers for this, but um, just to keep asking to pray for my friend and sister Lama. I don't know the outcome yet of the surgery. All I know is that she did open my text message to let her know I was thinking about her, so I actually haven't, I want to give her some time just to recover, so I don't know how she is yet. Um, this is from the, the cancer surgery that she had to remove the tumours from her abdomen. Um, so I'm just I'm kind of waiting, like, uh, with a bit of, uh, you know, like, I don't want to say anxiety, because I want to, you know, be faithful and things, but, like, you know, I'm just kind of waiting to find out how it went, so I just want to keep her in our prayers. Happy Sabbath, Church. Can we continue to keep Irene in our prayers too as she undergoes those treatments? Any more prayer requests? Happy Sabbath Church. Uh, uh, may I first bring you greetings from uh, your family uh, in Christ in South Africa. And as we have been introduced, I'm Sipo 
and Gelila's mom. I'm also Spare and Kira's mom, and this is my husband. We just want to thank God for his blessings uh, in our children, as um, probably most of you knew that um, Spare and Kira got married last Sunday. So we just want to praise God for his blessings, and we want to thank this church for nurturing uh, our children while we are away in all right back home in South Africa. And we want to thank uh, Pastor Ben uh, and his family for the part that they have played in uh, counseling and in kind of giving them the background that they need to start their family. So we just give God the praise and we want to thank him. Amen. I'd like to remind you as well, we have the prayer petition box. So if you have any prayer requests, you can put them there. Shall we all kneel as we seek the Lord in prayer, please? Heavenly Father, we come before you this afternoon with our hearts full of thanksgiving and gratefulness for all you have done for us in our lives. Thank you for seeing us through throughout the week and for making it possible for us to gather before you this Sabbath. And we pray that you will continue being in our midst, that you will continue speaking to us, convicting us, Lord, teaching us, guiding us, we thank you for all the blessings that you have given us. Sometimes we take these blessings for granted. But we know to be able to to be able to come to church. We haven't lost our faith in you. We still trust in you. And we want to say thank you, God, for keeping us and sustaining us. Because we know it is nothing that we have done. And even those people that have lost hope in you. We pray for them, Lord, that at this time that you may visit them. We want to bring Sister Lama into your able hands and Sister Irina. Lord, as they are struggling with, with cancer and as they are going through treatment, we pray that you may continue stretching your mighty hand, Lord, to heal them. We pray that you may guide the doctors and everybody else involved in their treatment, Lord. We pray that you may give them the strength they need every day. We pray that your presence will be in their lives, that they may understand that even though they walk through the shadow of the valley of death, that thou art with them, Lord. And even as the children's story, that sometimes we don't feel you, we don't see you, Lord. But help us always to remember, as you encourage Joshua, to be strong in you and to know that you're always there with us. And we know some of these uh, problems, they come and go, Lord. So strengthen us when we are going through trials and tribulation. You have promised us that we shall overcome as well because you overcame. We thank you for Mom Muriel and her family, thank you. She's praising you for seeing her kids through, that even when she's not ar around, you have been with them. And we want to praise you for keeping them, Lord, strong in you. And we pray that you may continue blessing them, Lord. All of them, we pray for them, those who are here and those who are not here, Lord. May you continue guiding them. May you continue meeting their needs, Lord. We are grateful to see you seeing them. It's been a while. And seeing that you have sustained them, we want to say thank you. Lord, we pray for the even the prayer requests that are in the petition box. You know them. And we pray that you may fulfill them, Lord. Help us to always look up unto you in every situation of our lives, God. Help us not to lean on our own understanding but always lean on you, trust in you in everything. 
as we continue with the service, we want to bring Pastor Ben into your able hands that you minister unto him, Lord. Let him speak that which cometh from you and help us to open our ears and our hearts that we may receive that which cometh from you. We thank you because you are always here with us because you have not forgotten us, Lord. And those that have silent prayer requests and those even at home that are watching us online and have prayer requests as well. We pray that you meet them at the appointed list, Lord. Thank you for your have been faithful to us. Thank you for you have seen us through, Lord. Thank you that you have been good to us. We pray all this through him that is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his presence of glory with exceeding joy to our only true God, our Savior. Be glory and dominion and power and majesty both now and forever. Amen. Thank you. Now I can be heard. I'm going to ask Samuel to come and lead us in the scripture reading, please. Happy Sabbath, church. Today I'll be reading from Revelation 3, verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him, and he with me. Amen. Amen. Let's call upon Lanzi family. For the special music. Thank you. Steps fall, love still. 
him lead me where he will. I will go without a mama and his footsteps follow still. I must save the Savior with me in the onward march of life. Through the tempest and the sunshine, through the battle and the strife, then my soul shall fear no ill. Let him lead me where he will. I will go without a mama and his footsteps fall. A blessed and happy Sabbath at church. A blessed and happy Sabbath. Just use two words, blessed and happy. <laughs> Amen. God is good all the time. And uh, praise the Lord, smiley, for the message in song. There's a line that struck me there. I dare not walk alone. Or I dare not walk without Jesus. Amen. I must have the Savior always with me. And it speaks about the message that I would like us to reflect as well today about God's longing for communion. And the scripture reading in Revelation 3 verse 20, we have a Savior who is knocking at the door of our hearts. There is a constant knocking there, and I hope that there is also a constant response to opening the door of our hearts to welcome the Savior uh, in. I have these uh, questions in mind. Eight old questions, well, one of them, pretty much. Uh, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? I was looking at Caroline. <laughs> which comes first, the <laughs> chicken or the egg, from a university perspective? Well, you know, I've been thinking about this question, by the way, because I know that these questions uh, have been around for ages, all right, before any of us have been born. This question had been asked, the chicken or the egg? But, uh, of course, it depends upon your worldview. Uh, from a creationist Christian worldview, it's definitely going to be the winged bird or the fowls of the air, because that's what a God created. On the fifth day, a God created a fully developed bird, ready to lay an egg and to reproduce. So it must be the uh, 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 ancestors of the domesticated chicken that we have today that came first. But of course, uh, from an evolutionary perspective, they would say it's the egg, all right, uh, that came first, that hatched uh, the chicken uh, out of it. Well, how about this one? Uh, thoughts or feelings? Which comes first, thoughts or feelings? Uh, so it's just thoughts, feelings. Yeah, but do you know that uh, psychologists would argue, Alan, that it's the feelings first, because the thoughts, it's our way of processing or making sense of the feelings. So we think about our feelings, and what they say anyway, all right? But here's another one, Alan, thunder or lightning? Kids, 
Which comes first, thunder or lightning? Well, this one, according to science, yeah, thunder or lightning? According to science, they actually occur roughly at the same time. But we see lightning first, and then we hear thunder next. Why? Because light travels faster than sound. So that's a very scientific answer there. But I'm a pastor. I'm not a scientist, all right? I'm just sharing something that I've Googled myself. <laughs> How about this one, Colin? Uh, when you eat a scone, a vegan scone, <laughs> unfortunately... Or the cream? Which counts first? Where, what, what do you put first? The jam or the cream? cream. The cream. That's a preference, by the way. <laughs> so I'm not going to answer this one. I'm going to leave that to your preference. When you're eating a scone, which one do you put first, Alan? The jam or the cream? There are people who have been debating that, by the way. All right? Jam. Okay. The two of you, you talk. Okay? <laughs> but here's... A more important question for all of us this morning in our study, all right? Which comes first? Our desire for a relationship with God? I want you to clearly uh, hear these words that I'm sharing, uh, I'm saying to you. Our desire for a relationship with God or God's desire to have a relationship with us? Hmm? I hope you know the answer to this one already. Is it our desire first to have a relationship with God or God's desire to have a relationship with us? Let me answer this question with uh, two verses this morning. The first one is in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. You can open your Bibles with you. It says, We loved Him because He what? He first loved us. And I think that verse cannot be clearer enough. We love God. We desire to be in a relationship with God because He first loved us or because God desires to have a relationship with us at first. And here's another one, Romans 5, verse 8. But God demonstrated His love to us that while we were one, while we were yet sinners, no desire to be in a relationship. We were yet sinners without a desire to be in a relationship with him. Jesus died for us because, again, it is God's initiative to be in a relationship with us. And here's the picture that I would like to paint for you today. Uh, friends, brothers and sisters, we have a God in heaven, Galila, who is constantly pursuing you. We have a God in heaven who is constantly pursuing humanity. Uh, in our Sabbath school lesson today with the young people, we highlighted these verses in Psalm 23rd. And the last verse in this shepherd psalm that we have, in verse 6, it says, Surely goodness and mercy will what? Shall follow me how many days of your life? All the days of your life. And I think I did mention this to the church already. That the word follow here is actually from a Hebrew word which literally means to be hunted down. It is a word used by hunters. It is not simply an act of following someone. It is the act of hunting someone down. But the good news here, it is God's goodness and mercy that is hunting you down, call it. It is God's goodness and mercy that is pursuing you because we have a God in heaven who constantly pursues human beings. In Psalm 139, verses 7 to 10, the psalmist asked these questions here. He said, Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me and your right hand shall hold me. We have a God who is constantly pursuing us. There is actually no place 
to hide from him? You know, here's an, a very interesting question. Uh, what do you do when somebody is pursuing you? Yeah, just think about it for a moment. What, what do you do? If, if somebody is pursuing you, what would you do? Young people, what would you do? Well, if somebody is pursuing you, you're going to run as fast as you could and create as, uh, as far a distance from your pursuer, all right? You run as fast as you could and, and, and have that distance from your pursuer. Or there's another way. When you are being pursued, you're going to what? You're going to hide, right? Hide from whoever is pursuing you. So it's either you run or you hide. And you know what? Somehow, somehow when we think about God pursuing Somehow people have been responding to God's pursuit in the same way. Have you realized that? Human beings, people have been responding to God's pursuit in the same way. There are people today who have been running away from God. And I say that again. There are people today who are running away from God. There are people who have continuously allowed sin to separate them from God. There are also people who suddenly they have given up on God. People who just want to put as much distance between them and Him. And by the way, this is exactly what the world has been doing right now. This is exactly what the world has been doing. We live in a world that is constantly running away from anything that has to do with God. We live in a world that is trying to get rid of Him. But here's what the Bible says. John 3.16, and you know the verse. What does it say? For God so loved the world that is trying to run away from Him. Did you hear me? For God so loved the world that is trying to run away from him that he gave his only begotten son. No matter, friends, brothers and sisters, no matter how far the world or a person has already run away from God, no matter how divinely separated the world or a person thinks he is away from God, God is not giving up on anyone. God is not giving up on this world yet. Amen? He is not giving up on anyone yet, not giving up on this world. And we should not as well, by the way. Amen? We should not give up on anyone. We should not give up on this world. He is constantly pursuing men and women, and he is constantly pursuing this world with his love. God is never far behind. He is waiting for men and women for them to stop running away and to turn around in order to encounter him. Amen? And this is the picture of the gospel, by the way. Even though a person has been a thousand kilometers away, I, this is probably the third time I mentioned this this past week. <laughs> Even though a person has been a thousand kilometers away from God, in that instant of recognizing a Savior, that Turn around. In that instant, he is back to God. Amen? A person who has been running away and walking away from God, now uh, been away a thousand kilometers, the moment that person turns his back and recognizes God, he is back with God. And there is that journey of growing in Jesus again in his or her life. And I hope that if you are that person, or we know of a person like that, let us, do not give up on yourself. Let us not give up on anyone. God is waiting. And the second one, there are people who have been hiding from God. Now, you know what I find interesting about hiding? Because you could hide without going very far. Do you hear me? Running away, you run away as far as you can. You put as far a distance between you and Whoever is pursuing you. But when you are hiding, you could actually hide without going very far. 
You could even hide in plain sight. Have you heard that statement, Brother Thomas? Yeah? Hiding in plain sight. And friends, uh, brothers and sisters, unfortunately, there are times when this church could be a good place to hide. You know that? A church could be a good place to hide. And yes, we could be in this community of fight, but somehow, in some way, hiding from God. And the Bible actually speaks about this in 2 Timothy 3 verse 5. Uh, having a form of godliness, but actually denying its what? Denying its power in his or her life. And so yes, there are people in Christianity today. There are people even in the Seventh-day Adventist Church who have been holding on to religion for a long time, but they haven't fully permitted God to penetrate the house. I know it is a big statement to make. And it could be true to me. It could be true to me as your pastor, all right, that I have been a pastor for many years, but I haven't, I haven't fully permitted God and his grace to penetrate my heart. People who have been hiding behind a camouflage of religiosity and godliness, but have been denying God's power to create in them a clean heart and to renew in them the right spirit. Is that what the psalmist says in Psalm 51, verse 10? A prayer, Lord, create in me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. But friends, brothers and sisters, if I am this person today, the good news is God is not giving up on me. Amen? Amen. God is not giving up on me. He is constantly pursuing me, waiting for me to show my true self in order to encounter him. Uh, there's a beautiful verse in Jeremiah 3, verse 13. Uh, 31, verse 3, I mean. Jeremiah 31, verse 3. God said, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. What kind of love? A hundred-year kind of love? No. An everlasting love. And therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. And I hope that we are responding to this loving kindness today that is drawing us a close uh, to Jesus. And again, if I can say this, uh, friends, brothers and sisters, don't give up on anyone. Amen? Let us not give up on anyone who we think has been running away from God. Let us not give up on anyone who we think has been hiding from God. But in the same way as God, with loving kindness, we must draw these people to him in order to encounter him, in order to fellowship with him, in order to communion with him or to commune with him. Because we have a God in heaven who longs, who desires to fellowship with us. There is a longing, friends, brothers and sisters, there is a longing in God's heart for communion. There is a longing in God's heart to fellowship with us. You know, this is the reason that God said in the Old Testament, in Exodus 25, verse 8, he said this to, uh, he said this to Moses, let them build me a what? A sanctuary. What is the reason for the sanctuary? So that I may dwell with them. That is the message of the sanctuary. That is the message of this church. That is the message of this community. Let them build my church, all right? So I can dwell among them. And this is also the reason why Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. Romans 5 verse 10, it says, We were reconciled to God, uh, to God through the death of his Son. And if I can paraphrase John 3.16, for God, instead of saying, so love the world, for God longs to commune with humanity that he gave his only begotten son. Amen? God's longing for communion cost him his only begotten son. And this is also why Jesus made a promise. John 14, verse 3. What is the promise? I will come again. What is the next to that? 
That's not the only promise there. I will come again so that where I am, there you may be as well. There is still the longing for fellowship there. Jesus himself said, I am coming again and I'm going to take you so I can have fellowship with you. That wherever I am, there you will be as well. Now let me expand this a thought very quickly uh, by going back into Psalm 139. You know, Psalm 139, one of my uh, uh, favorite uh, chapters in the Bible. And uh, Psalm 139 uh, sort of uh, uh, give us this uh, a picture, all right, of an infinite God that even though we are finite, we have an infinite God who is present everywhere, our creator God who is present in your life today, and someone who deeply cares about you and me. You know, in Psalm 139, if you look at, uh, say, um, uh, verses 1 to 6, all right? Psalm 139, verses 1 to 6. There are a number of uh, powerful words in there. If you are there in that chapter, let, let me highlight quickly these words. The psalmist uh, David said, You have searched me. There is a searching from a God in there. You have known me. You understand my thought from afar. There is an understanding there. You comprehend my path and my lying down. There is comprehending. You are acquainted with all my ways. And then verse 5. You have hedged me behind and before. And the, number, uh, and the last part of verse 5. And laid your hand upon me. All these uh, seven words. They gave us this picture of a God in heaven who is a present in your life right now. And when it says God is present here in our midst, I want you to understand the uh, powerful significance to that. Because when you think about human beings, when I look at Kai right now, the only space that you are occupying right now is the space where you are sitting which is probably, we have to say, less than uh, 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 a meter square. Would you say so? If you put your feet a little bit into your chair, yeah. You're occupying space that is less than a meter square, all right? And you could not occupy another space at the same time, all right? You could not occupy this uh, chair in front of me here. That is the only space that you have. But I want you to picture our God in heaven who occupies every space in this planet and every space in the universe. Amen? But here is the good news from Psalm 139. This God who is present everywhere is present in your life. Amen? So it is not only about God being present everywhere, but it is God who is present in your life. Amen? That a God who can be present today and in the future is present right now in your life. And to me, that is good news. To me, that is good news. And this God would want to have a relationship with me. And so again, this relationship we have with God is God's initiative. And today, I hope that there is gratitude in our hearts, knowing that we have a God in heaven who longs to be involved, intimately involved in your life and in my life today. You know, when we try to imagine it, human beings desiring to have a relationship with God, uh, can you picture an ant, a tiny ant, young people and kids today, can you picture a tiny ant initiating a relationship with human beings? It's impossible, right? But maybe as human beings, we can go down into the level of the ant and start talking to the ant, although we would look what? Foolish, right? For doing that. But I mean, you just see the impossibility of connecting between the ant or the human being 
and absolutely impossible for an ant to initiate an engagement with a human being. But the good news for us, we have a God in heaven who cares for little ants like us. Amen? We have a God in heaven who has initiated this amazing relationship with us. We have a God who knows everything, but we also have a God who knows me personally. We have a God who is present in my life. He knows my heart. He knows my thoughts. He knows my motives. He knows my frustrations. He knows my fears. He knows my hopes, my joys, my desires, my dreams, my past, my present, and future. There is nothing in me that I could hide. There is nothing in me that he doesn't know. He is present in my life, and he is present with me right now, today, at this very moment. Now, I wrote something here for reflection today. And I would like to read it to you. The mystery of God's longing heart. The mystery of God's longing heart. Why? Why do I call it a mystery? Because God does not need us. Does he? God does not need us. He is self-sufficient, eternally happy in himself, completely satisfied in his endless glory, as you could say it. He has all the abundance of heaven to enjoy. So why would the God of all creation be interested in me, in me who is so insignificantly small compared to all of his creation? Why would he be pursuing me? Why would he be longing to commune with me? Many more questions. How is it possible that his heart is being moved by weak, broken, imperfect, rebellious, and sinful human being like me? Did you hear that question? Why would God be interested in me who is weak, broken, imperfect, rebellious, and sinful human being? Why would he care? Why would he save me at all? And finally, why gave his only begotten son to die on the cross of Calvary for me? You know, we're not the first ones to ask these questions. King David asked this question. If you open your Bibles in Psalm 8 verse 4, David asked this question, and we are about to close our study today. David asked this question. He said, what is man that you are, what? Mindful of him. What is man that you are mindful of him? Uh, friends, uh, brothers and sisters, it is unfathomable. It is incomprehensible. It is a mystery. But here's what I would like to say about it. Here's what I would like to say about it today. I don't have the answer to these questions. But God's longing heart is a mystery that I am more than happy and grateful to embrace today. Amen? Even if I don't fully understand it, it is something that I would gladly and gratefully embrace today. I don't have to fully understand why God is longing for me. I only need to believe it. Amen? I only need to accept it. I only need to embrace it today with all my heart. Hey, friends, hey, brothers and sisters, we have a God who is relentlessly and constantly pursuing us today. He longs to have communion with you and me. So let me leave you our scripture reading again. Revelation 3 verse 20. He says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. How would you respond today? Would you stop running? Would you stop hiding? 
Would you open the door very wide today and let Jesus come in to your hearts? May the Lord bless us. Amen. to lead us in the closing hymn, please. Let's stand for the closing hymn 301, Nearer, Still Nearer. <coughs> I hope that uh, you're not getting tired of Romans 8, chapter verses 37 to 39 as our benediction. You let me know if you've memorized it already so we can find another scripture benediction. Uh, but I hope that these verses would constantly be true in our lives. That in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, no things present, no things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus and our Lord. For this we ask, we long, and we pray in Jesus' name.
Amen. Let's sing 214 for this one, Bashar Khan. <laughs> 